Hello everyone, welcome to CE3210 Geotechnical Engineering. In this video, we're going to start Chapter 11, Compressibility of Soil. Uh, this is again uh, one of the main course objectives, that is to estimate the magnitude and time rate of settlement due to consolidation. So I want to start this chapter with uh, uh, this famous case of geotechnical engineering failure, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. So the construction of this tower started 11, in 1173 and uh, completed almost 200 years later. The tower itself is 180 feet tall with a 9 feet foundation that sits on a weak, unstable soil, which was a design flaw from the very beginning. So a few things I want to highlight here from this uh, case. First, soil deforms and settles in response to applied load. In this case, the weight of the tower deforms the soil underneath. And it may have differential settlement. And second, this deformation can take very, very long time in some soils. In this uh, linear tower of Pisa case, the, actually the settlements continued for over 600 years. Back in 1100s, there was no science-based design. So that's why you have this poorly designed foundation. In this chapter, we're going to talk about theory of compressibility of soils that will help you better understand how soil deforms settles and how to design foundations to prevent this from happening uh, for your project. Uh, for this chapter, uh, we're going to actually break it into two parts. In part one of this chapter, we're going to talk about uh, what is um, settlement in soils and what is consolidation and how do you use one-dimensional laboratory consolidation test to find out relationship between void ratio, effective stress, and to determine the pre-consolidation pressure. And the key question we want to answer in part one is how much settlement is expected due to primary consolidation. And in part two of this chapter, uh, we'll focus on the time rate of consolidation, basically to answer the question, how fast or how long will the consolidation uh, settlement occur? Uh, first, uh, let's talk about the total settlement in soil due to loading. Um, there are actually three components of uh, total settlement. The first one is the elastic deformation, or it's called immediate settlement. So the elastic deformation is caused by the elastic, uh, or the elastic settlement is caused by the elastic deformation of soil without any change in the moisture content. And the calculation of elastic settlement can be done using the theory of elasticity. And the second component is called primary consolidation. And primary consolidation is a result of a volume change in saturated cohesive soils, namely clays, because of the drainage of water from voids. And the time rate of this consolidation largely depends on the permeability of soil and the drainage distance. And the third component is called the secondary consolidation. Uh, this is due to the plastic adjustment of cohesive soil uh, under a constant or cohesive soil fabric under a constant effective stress that is called a creep. So in this chapter, we're going to focus on the second co component, primary consolidation, and we're going to focus on clays, cohesive soils, clays. As I mentioned in this chapter, we're going to focus specifically on the consolidation or the primary consolidation of clays. And the reason why we care about clays is because clays are softer materials compared to sand. So you would expect more sediment when clays are loaded. And also clays we know are much less permeable. So it takes much longer time for consolidation to happen to complete in clays. To understand the, how we calculate consolidation of clays, so let's take a look at this simple setup here. So you have a 20 feet of soft clay that is going to be loaded by, say, 10 feet of sandy fuse on top. To calculate the, to estimate the sediment of this uh, clay layer, uh, 
we're going to actually take a sample from this clay layer at the middle of the layer to be representative. And then we're going to put this sample in the lab to conduct what we call 1D consolidation lab test. In this lab test, we're going to put some load on the clay sample and then study how this clay deforms in response to your applied load. And the results of the 1D consolidation test provide some key information we need for sediment calculation, uh, including modulus, pre-consolidation pressure, and consolidation coefficient. So we'll talk more details uh, about this 1D consolidation test and the meaning of each of these parameters. But these are basically the information you need for sediment calculation of clay layer in the field. So basically the assumption here is that this representative sample you take from this mid layer is characteristic. It's going to represent what's going to happen to the soft clay layer when it is loaded in the field. The 1D lab consolidation test procedure was first suggested by Kyle Tosaki. So the schematic diagram of this test is shown on this slide. So uh, in the diagram, you can see there is a soil specimen that is placed inside a metal ring. And there are two porous stones, one at the top and the other one at the bottom of the specimen. So during the test, to so place some load on this specimen, so you compress the soil specimen. And at the same time, you have some gauge to measure the deformation delta H. So for each loading, uh, to allow the uh, pore pressure to dissipate, to allow the drainage to complete, so this sigma is typically kept at 24 hours until the next load is applied. So during the entire process, the specimen is placed uh, under the water table, so the soil is fully saturated. So at the end of the consolidation, the total stress sigma is equal to the effective stress in the specimen because all the pore pressure is dissipated when the consolidation is completed. Uh, shown on this slide is a typical deformation curve from this 1D consolidation test. As you can see, there are three stages of deformation. Uh, the first one is uh, initial compression, which is caused by preloading the specimen. And the second one is our focus, that is the primary consolidation. So primary consolidation, again, is due to the drainage of pore water from voids. And the last uh, deformation type is uh, secondary consolidation. And this is due to the plastic adjustment of the soil fabric. Results of the 1D consolidation test are typically reported in terms of a semi-log plot uh, that shows the relationship between deformation and load during the test. So for deformation, uh, we quantify the deformation in terms of the void ratio change in the specimen. And the load is uh, expressed in terms of the effective stress uh, in the uh, specimen. And it's plotted in a semi-log scale. Unique characteristic of clay's behavior, it's its history dependency. So basically, clays have some memory of their stress history. Uh, in particular, there is this concept called pre-consolidation pressure, which we call sigma C prime, which is the maximum effective stress a clay has experienced in its geologic history. So depending on the relationship between the current stress and uh, this pre-consolidation pressure, the loading behavior of clay changes. So to illustrate the point at this point, so let's look at this um, typical loading unloading curve on the right hand side. So we're going to focus on two portions of this curve. The first portion is this uh, steep, almost linear straight line portion, BCG. And this is the loading curve, loading part. So let's say you're loading clay along this uh, initial loading curve up to some point C and after which you start to unload the clay. So the loading curve follows this CD path. So notice the slope of this unloading portion is much shallower compared to the initial loading curve. And also 
uh, the void ratio increases during unloading, meaning the clay is expanding as expected. And then after point D, you reload the clay. So during this reloading process, uh, initially, the slope of this reloading portion is similar to the unloading. So it has a much shallower slope until it passes point C. So point C, now by definition, is the maximum effective stress a clay has experienced. So that's roughly your pre-consolidation pressure. So if you reload the clay past sigma C prime, past this point C, you'll notice clay, basically, this loading curve goes, uh, goes back to the original or initial loading portion, the steep, steep curve. So let's follow this CG path here. Uh, this is an idealized curve of the previous loading, unloading, and reloading behavior. So basically, we idealize that loading, unloading, and reloading portion with two straight lines. So the steep portion, so this is the initial loading curve. So the slope of this loading curve, uh, we call C sub C. And this is called the compression index. And then the uh, unloading and reloading portion, so this straight line with a shallower slope, uh, we call this, um, the slope of this line is called C sub S. This is called recompression or swell index. And this turning point here, by definition, is uh, the pre-consolidation uh, pressure we call sigma C prime. So the 1D consolidation lab test is probably one of the most reliable way to get CC and CS. Uh, alternatively, there are some empirical correlations that you can use to get some rough estimation. For a compression index CC, the Scampton correlation is one of the most commonly used, where LL stands for liquid limit. For recompression or swell index CS, a rule of thumb is CS is approximately one fifth to one tenth of CS or CC. And alternatively, you can also use a plastic index to estimate CS. Other correlations are also available in Table 11.6 in your textbook for the compression index CC.